what we're going to do is just go show you through the process um, of what Chad does in the brewery um, and then just go through uh, just a bit of what I've put down on the PDF as instructions for um, making your own at home. Obviously on the micro scale, we've also got a SCOBY that we've grown from scratch that uh, basically fills up uh, one of the six, uh, one of the big cylinders up in the back. And this is what you can grow at home just from uh, brewing your tea and mixing it and fermenting with the sugar. So I'll, I'll let Chad uh, take over and uh, be the professional. I'll just ask him a few questions and uh, hopefully he'll lead us where we need to, to go. And you guys can just ask questions as we go. <coughs> Is that all good? Cool. <laughs> Lawrence Chad is the owner of Aroa Kombucha, which is based here in the Bay of Plenty. Um, Chad um, started his business three and a half years ago and uh, is the proud owner of a very successful brand of kombucha that sells in about 70 odd cafes within the bay um, and um, I'll just go through a bit of uh, the history with Chad and ask him a few questions on how he got started and then, uh, eventually take you into uh, a miniature process of how to make your own kombucha at home. Um, obviously I think most of you uh, know about uh, the grand effects and uh, advantages of uh, having kombucha as a probiotic and um, it is the in thing to be um, consuming. Welcome Chad, uh, lovely to have you here today. Um, thank you for being part of this presentation. Um, tell us more about kombucha and how you got yourself into um, this whole business. So yeah, so thank you Gary for having me. Um, hello everyone, how's it? Cool. So yeah, so first off, I um, I grew up on fizzy drinks to be pretty, um, like, yeah, that's how I started off. I grew up on fizzy drinks. And then when I moved to Papa Moore about four years ago, um, I was, I went to a friend's house and he was brewing, home brewing kombucha. So um, short story, he gave me a bit of a scoby and I took it home and I started brewing it for myself and my family. And immediately I started noticing the health benefits. Um, I felt good. I lost, you know, I lost some weight in my stomach and overall health was just, I just felt the, the change and the shift. So I started out, um, yeah, like you do is you, I wanted to, I found my passion pretty much and I wanted to be able to share it with others and help others come into the health journey that I had experienced by drinking kombucha. I'll just go back. Yeah, a little bit, Chad. Um, a, a scoby. You mentioned the scoby. Um, can you tell us more about what a scoby is? Uh, I know it's an integral part of uh, the kombucha process. Um, yeah, can you expand mm -hmm. on that? So, like I say, hey, so the scoby is or bug or cellulose um, culture. These are all different names that the, the thing that sits on top of the brew's court. So it's also an acronym for um, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So um, as you know, um, there's two ingredients that you need for kombucha to be able to ferment and give off um, the probiotics, the vitamins, the minerals, the organic acids, all the stuff that happens from fermentation. So yeah, what happens is the, in the process, you it's like making a cup of tea. So you make a cup of tea, you put your, your tea and your sugar in it, mix it up, and then you then cool, cool the process and then you add the culture or the scoby on top and in return the scoby feeds off the tea and the sugar and then as you know turns it into um, organic acids, um, probiotics, all those good things that come from the fermentation process. So this is, uh, this is basically what a scoby looks like um, after how many odd days does so that, that one was growing with, with just from scratch. So no scoby was introduced. That was just straight starter. And about three, uh, three to five days that one grew actually from nothing. So mm -hmm. as you can see, it's quite, quite thick, quite, the color's quite white. So it's a, it's 
the baby, it's the new one that's formed on top. Um, can you explain to us what starter is and what the difference between starter and scoby maybe? So starter is pretty much starter is pretty much fermented um, kombucha that's gone through the full cycle in a fermentation process. And what happens is, so you've got your sweet tea, right? You've got your sweet tea that you've made with your tea and your sugar. It's been cooled now, so it's been cooled down to room temperature. Um, so now that it's cool and room temperature. A scoby is now introduced into which is, the which is the bacteria, which is the bacteria yeast, and then and then it grows, it, it, it finds itself from that point on. Yes, and then from there, it, so you, to be able to bring bring the pH down of the new brew um, of sweet tea that you've had, you have to bring the pH down because the pH now and the sweet tea will probably be around five point five pH. pH is the potential hydrogen, so it's it, does anyone know what vinegar is? So vinegar, if you looked on a scale, vinegar is around 2.5 pH. So if you can look at white vinegar, it's quite acidic, quite um, strong. At 2.5 um, pH, pH is when vinegar is. So kombucha can be around, finished kombucha can be around anywhere 3.3 to 3.2, if that gives you sort of an idea of um, the pH lives, the taste and the acidity from vinegar to kombucha. So when you, when you brew a, um, a fresh batch of tea, um, you now need to pull the pH down because the pH is, will be high around 5.5. So what you do to acidify it and bring the pH down so you can protect it from foreign uh, molds, anything that can contaminate the brew because it's, the pH is still higher. Does that make sense? I'm probably going. Right. Uh, no, I, I can. I, I follow what you were saying. So, so what you do is you now get that fermented tea or the fermented um, kombucha, which is starter, known as starter, and you add it. So add about ten percent to the fresh brew, and what happens is that brings the pH down to around anywhere anything below four point five pH is safe for the to, to protect the kombucha from getting any molds foreign pathogens, any of that stuff that can contaminate the brew. And um, are you able to pick up some of the starter stuff from like a shop or Well, something? pretty much if, if you know, so if you don't have a SCOBY, um, you can get any bottle of kombucha or just make sure that it's non-pasteurized and it's not pasteurized. The difference from pasteurized, if you go into the, the, the supermarket and you, you just have to check to see if it's not pasteurized. Because if it's been pasteurized, they heat or they heat it up so that it kills all the um, living organisms in it. So you want to make sure that it's not pasteurized, that it's, it's still the non, non pasteurized. And then what you do is you add ten percent of that bottle into the fresh tea. The fresh tea. So you use this almost as starter. So, so, so that, this bottle is a so starter. So that creates the bacteria, yep. the active bacteria that then yeah. starts to. Um, make that scoby. The scoby looks like a big piece of jelly, if yeah. you can see that there. Like cellulose, it's quite like jellyfish, it's that. And it, it's, uh, it's uh, almost, well, it is actually just a big living piece of bacteria that is actually refining all of that sugary process and, yeah. um, and uh, making this super great juice for your gut. Um, so with kombucha, is there any alcohol in kombucha? Is there anything that we need to... There's always going to be up low, minimal, low amounts of alcohol in the brew because it's fermentation. When there's some fermentation involved, there, there's always going to be low amounts, but... Nothing to get you drunk or No, anything. nothing to get yeah, yeah, fair enough. And the legal requirements in New Zealand are 1.5%. 1 1 anything below that is considered non-alcoholic so it's totally totally um it's totally, safe. To totally safe for kids yeah. and, and uh, yeah. anyone else to drink yeah. all my brews are tested in the lab and i make and i send them in to get them tested to make sure that all the levels are, are kosher and i have tools at the back of me here to be able to measure the alcohol content so i'm always taking yeah measuring and so if you testing. were to make um a brew at home um technically you'd need um just so jar, some sugar. So you need your jar. Jar. Some sugar. Is it? 
these come in 25 kg bags, but I use organic, I use organic pan sugar. Or organic pan sugar, and you can get them from bin and get them from any of those uh, bulk, um, uh, food stores. bulk food stores. Organic pan sugar. For, for your, for your... But in terms of, you can sugar sauce, you can experiment, you can use coconut sugar, you can use brown sugar, you can use any sugar sauce pretty much. But I use this one because this is the one that I've been brewing for the last five years. So my culture is now adapted to this, this sugar. So I just use this. So the scoby you've, um, you started with when you first um, started brewing, is that the same scoby? Yeah, the same, yeah. same scoby. So the same scoby, yeah. That's just um, regenerated itself over the last three and a half years yeah. and it's continued to grow the same uh, same cultures Culture. to, to give you that kombucha. And I've just refined it. So I started off by, as you do, you just trial and error, different teas, different sugars, all that sort of stuff, and refined it so I can get the product that I have now. Yeah. Awesome. And um, what sort of tea would you recommend? Um, I know you use green mm. tea in your brew. Yeah, most people, some people use black tea, like a mixture of black tea and green tea. Um, I purely like to use green tea because I like a subtle, more subtle flavor, not like a black tea is a more robust and stronger. But I like the green tea and because it's quite light, it's quite subtle. And I, I understand, nice I understand that the green, green tea has got uh, quite a lot of health properties as well. And um, I mean, just by itself, green tea, the help in uh, aiding all those things that we're talking about, like your gut health and uh, well, all the benefits that come with yeah. green tea so well, yeah green tea is basically made it's it's high in antioxidants like polyphenols and all those things that have that fight your cancer and 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 repair your cells and all that sort of stuff so, so to diabetes yeah, as well. yeah all that yeah so nice um uh, how's um how's your business going at the moment you are you're doing well um you involved in the community i know you've got a big push in um helping children with gut health and uh You've been getting yourself involved with um, the mental health side of uh, the conversation in and around Papamoa. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, my focus now is, yeah, to, like you said, to teach the, the, the children, um, you know, children, and then work my way up to, like, the youth, and then hopefully get some awareness around that, around gut health and how it's so important while they're young and while they grow, their bodies grow to take care of your gut health. And less sugars, yeah, less sugars, less refined sugars, and yeah, all those. Get them off the fizzy drinks. Get right? them off the energy drinks, the fizzy drinks, everything that's destroying the gut health, pretty much. Cool. So, in all in all, it takes about two to four weeks to grow a new scoby, does it? Well, if you're starting from scratch, like you'll start seeing a new scoby grow on top within like two to two to five days, you'll start seeing a little white film. Start forming on the top, and over time, each brew it gets thicker and thicker. But if you already have an existing scoby, then you can put it into the fresh brew after you've added the starter, and that actually will ferment faster because the scoby's already there, so it's already thick and it's eating faster, um, eating the sugars and the tea. So, so the longer the the kombucha ferments, the less sweet and more acidic yeah. the resulting liquid will be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. Yeah, so, 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 like with the name Roa, what does that stand for? That's, um, so, Roa Māori means long, delayed, takes time. Um, so does kombucha without the time. You don't get the, you know, the fermentation, you don't get the probiotics, the vitamins, the minerals, the organic acids. And obviously the taste. And obviously, yeah, obviously the taste and the flavour profiles. So, ideally, you want to have your brew going for a longer period of time. To um... Well, it depends, man. It depends. If you like a sweeter brew, you can pull it out earlier. You know what I mean? If you like a sour brew, then you can leave it in for longer. So you're the judge of when you, um, yeah, when you actually pull it out, I guess. And, but, uh, yeah. uh, but, sorry, but one thing you want to look at also, is there's tools, special tools that you can use to help measure the pH, um, the sugar levels, um, there's little tools that you can use to help you in the process as well. So I can show you some of the tools that I use behind me after this or that I use in my brews. Chad's, um, Chad, Chad's been absolutely amazing with what he's done with his business. Uh, I must say I met this guy a year ago and absolutely blown away with um, 
just the endeavor of a man. Um, he's uh, he's got is it seven cylinders in there? I got five. Five cylinders. Four hundred liter. Four, five four hundred cylinder four hundred liter cylinders in there. He brews that all by himself. Uh, and um, behind me, you won't see it at the moment. He does all the bottling by hand. Um, so all the small batch brewing by hand. Uh, he, he when I met him, he was doing all the deliveries within the bay by himself. Um, doing everything all the old school way and. Uh, you really can taste the difference in terms of um, what goes into his uh, kombucha as compared to the stuff that you might find in um, the larger supermarkets or elsewhere. Um, I do encourage you guys to try it. Um, he is online and um, I hope it'll help. If you have any questions, email me, um, chad at rawkombucha.co.nz. I hope it'll help you out. Yeah, anything that I can help to help you guys, whatever, yeah. Yeah, um, cool. And um, are you able to? Sh I, I, what we need to talk about is, uh, I guess, flavors, flavoring your kombucha. Yeah, so there's two ways to flavor it. Easy, the first ferment where you can put the flavorings in before and that they go through the cycle with the scoby in it. There's that way first. Or there's also what they call a secondary ferment, is where you do the first ferment base only and then. You put it into a bottle, you put all your flavorings in, like you brought berries or that's the thing about the second ferment. It's it's um what's the word? It's so endless. It's, you can do anything. You so can so you flavor so of herbs, spices, you can fruits. So do you do you, you, fla you flavor the for the kombucha the first time with just a base flavor? Yeah. So the base flavor is that's in the first ferment with the scoby in it. Right. And then that's yeah, so you can do it that way. Yeah. So you can put the flavorings in with the scoby. Scoby, yeah. And ferment it that way. Yeah. But I like to keep it separate because I don't like to introduce anything to the mother. The, the scoby, I like to keep it pure and, yeah, without just the green tea alone in the base. Right. But and Yeah, I do the second ferment, which is put it into another vessel. I do kegs. So I do, like, these kegs behind me. I, if you can see that. Yeah, I do kegs. I put them in kegs. And then I um, flavor them in the kegs. And then, because I've got outlets around around the Bay of Plenty that do it on tap. So I just supply them kegs and they, yeah, they go mm -hmm. on tap. Nice, nice, beautiful. Um, also, um, cool, what else do we need to go through? So if you were doing this at home, um, you'd probably want to do it in. Yeah. So, this one, for instance, this is so. This is a six liter, a six liter vessel, and you could just glass is the best way to start. I, I like glass. Like I started brewing out of this when I first started, and um, I, I I found that it it's actually yeah, it's just better taste. You can see actually see the culture in there as well, and you can see it the all the yeast and the strands hanging off it, which is pretty cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you were to start, just remember. That it's ten. I use ten percent of starter liquid, which is the fermented kombucha, the mature kombucha. Well, so this is six liters. Six six liters. I would use six hundred mils. Six hundred mils of starter to re kick start this. Yeah. So, yeah, and tea bags. So my the tea bags. I for this I use organic loose leaf, um, green tea, and a bit of a mix of oolong tea. But I, for this one, you can go, you can go and get some tea bags, which are, if you're small scale, I use organic fair trade um, green tea, um, which I find it gives a good brew. But two tea bags per one liter, and in terms of sugar, um, around 50 grams, between 50 grams and 70 grams per liter. So you you can. Add anywhere from whatever you feel, 50 or 70. You like it sweeter, you don't like it sweeter, you can you can choose. Right, I, there's a few questions here. Um, I'll just go through them. Can... How, can you, they... how can you measure pH? So, so what about, I mean, if, you, if you're a small scale person just doing it out of your kitchen, is, do you, do you 
Are you going to get one of these machines? Or yeah, well, they're relatively cheap, bro, and you can get them like in, on Trade Me and stuff. They're, so PH, you can give it the pool, the, the pool testing places as well. Right. So um, the pH testing kits, you can get those. Yeah, out. you can use those. You can use the paper ones, but I use the digital because it's just easier and it shows you on the um, on the screen. So um, there's also a solution that it comes in, so you can actually test. Calibra, uh, calibrate it and you know test you do all that stuff so yeah i use one of these i've been using it for the last like four years it's still going strong does the trick um yeah yeah nice uh, and it i is. suppose it is a it's a great investment if you oh yeah you know, if you're brewing kombucha every yeah. day this is a must you know and i think um once you start brewing kombucha i don't think it's something that you're just going to put down after no, two man. minutes it's uh it becomes a um a lifestyle uh, yeah. I, I know for certain that I haven't touched uh, any fizzy drinks in the last two or three years since I, well, last year definitely since I've known you. But I mean, we, we did meet because um, of our combined interest in, interest in uh, healthy foods and healthy living. So yeah, um, kombucha for me, I, between water and kombucha, it's probably the only two things that I drink. Yeah, same with me. Yeah, yeah um, with kombucha. And maybe some juice. Uh, I like the juices, the fresh, fresh yeah, juices. Yeah, fresh which... juice, yeah. Nice How much sugar is left in the drink at the end? Um, one of these, uh, just off the back of this one, has got 3.5 grams per 350 mils. Is it so there's a little device here called a refractometer. Did you can see that. So this is another way to measure measure um, the sugar levels. So Th this this would be like more professional, right? Yeah, uh, more professional, but. Yeah, if you were doing it at home, you, you just taste it and go, that's enough sugar. We'll yeah, yeah, you use your taste, your yeah, taste yeah, buds. Yeah. Are, yeah, actually, but yeah, this is another way you could test the sugar as well. Nice. So this is what I use to make sure that the uh, sugar the, levels are right on the back of the labels. And Yeah, I suppose once you start going uh, large scale like yourself, you, you, you've you got to have all the, pro the proper tools. Proper and, tools. But um, as you're saying, um, with the sugar levels, um, it's up to your tastes, um, yeah. and, and if you you like it sweet, you like it sour, you like it, yeah, you just pick which way you want to grow. Yeah, which way you like it. Are fruit teas okay? I've had a fruit tea kombucha. Yeah, fruit teas, fruit teas okay. I just, for me personally, I like to use organic because I know that it's it's um, there's no pesticides or sprays or anything that have been used in the making of it. So anything I use, I like organic. And, and another thing with the fruit trees, uh, fruit teas, is that uh, there is um, sugars that can penetrate into the drink as well. So add and add some more sugar layers into yeah. your drink. So um, just be wary. That's of another that. thing too. Yeah, so well, good that you mentioned that. Right? Yeah. You can also increase those <coughs> the sugars. sugars. Yeah. And if you're doing the second fermentation as well, that when you're introducing the fruits, make sure you're you're burping the your sealed vessel when you're doing the fer second fermentation just because there's build up from the ethanol and the sugars uh, feeding the bacteria and the yeast again so it's still it will continue to build up ethanol which is co2 that's why you need to constantly just give it a burp and oh, release the air release the air else it's going to build up and and yeah. sometimes i've had cases where you just pop the top and it just poof, oh splashes even, even exploding <laughs> bottles worst case yeah yeah awesome once it gets started, what has to be done afterwards? Does it need stirring? Does it need stirring, Chad? Does it? So once it gets started. So once so you put the tea and the sugar in. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to stir the sugar because you've got to dissolve it. But other than that, you're just steeping the tea and stirring the sugar till it dissolves. Okay. But that's why you have to have it when it's hot. Hot. So, so then the, the dissolves, sugar dissolves. dissolves. Okay. So you're, you're, you're chucking in your sugar, your tea. Yep. You're stirring it just like you would yep. a cup of tea. A cup of tea. And, yep. and letting that tea, tea cool down to room temperature. Yep. And then from there, you can start growing scoby. What I do, what I do is, because the thing is, you don't want to add the culture or the starter when the, the brew is really hot. The reason why you don't want to do that is because you, you've got to um, kill the yeah uh, potential of killing the the live um culture so you always i call it down to room temperature so what i do is if i've got a vessel like this i will because this is six liters i would fill it up to around a liter so a liter of hot water 
Um, so this is done in the pan, not done in here. Don't throw it in the gloves. <laughs> this is done in a um, stainless pan. I put the, the tea, two tea bags per one litre. Um, do a concentrated batch of about one litre of hot. And then, and so this is hot in the actual stainless steel pot. So we're doing it in the stainless steel pot, not in this. And then put 100 litres in. And then what I'll do is put the tea in the sugar to dissolve it and, and, and seep all the tea, the tea up. And then I'll add in cold water on top to fill the rest up five litres. Right. What that does is it pulls the temperature sh straight down. So then you can introduce the SCOBY. Oh, nice. Or the starter. Yeah. But I, I suppose, I mean, if you're, if, if you're not doing it to sell the kombucha, you can take your time to do all of that process and yeah, just yeah. wait for everything to cool down. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can leave it on the stovetop so you can do the full six litres in the, in the stainless pan and the pot and then let it cool overnight and then put it into the vessel in the morning. You know, you can do, you can do. Mind you, the ratios for the six liters, you can use those ratios for any size uh, yeah, vessel, vessel yeah. that you have. As long as it's 10%, roughly, yeah. people take 10%. If you want it to ferment faster, you add more starter. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, the boot is yummier than the supermarket one. I can vouch for that and um, get some. Get yourself, uh, get your mouth around this stuff. It's uh, it's addictive. Um, I'm pretty sure Chad can organise anyone a discount for your first try. Um, is that a bacteria? Yeah. Oh, it is basically <laughs> this. Um, we are just parasites, and yes, this is basically a big ass bacteria. Um, there we go. It's uh, it's like a waxy film. It feels like a jelly thing. Um, we don't want to get anything in it, but basically... Another thing I like to use is like rubber bands. It's good for like putting around the top. Putting around the top. And yeah. these things love, scobies love like fruit flies. So you got to make sure you have a covering on the top because the fruit flies just get attracted to it. It's just the nature of the vinegar qualities in the, in the product. There you go. You take that yeah, so... Um, I didn't mention the top, so you can use a um, when you're covering your kombucha in the final vessel. Um, I use just a um, rubber band. I just put it over the top, stretch, and um, yeah, that's it. Um, a tea towel, um, something that's not too open to let like the the um, the bugs and the the um, foreign little pet, little objects in there but enough to um, allow air so that it can ferment and grow. Second ferment sometimes creates another scoby. Is that normal? I think yeah, it is. Yep, it's, always, it's, normal. it's always normal. Yeah, you always see on the top. So you've got the mother on the bottom. The baby scoby will always be formed on, on the top, which is the white. Um, you can see that one, it was white. So that was the new baby forming on the top. Also, for how long do you do the second ferment before you remove the fruit and refrigerate it? Yeah, well, anywhere from, it just depends really, eh? Because yeah. each scoby is made up of different bacteria and yeast. So um, I'm going to say anywhere from five to seven days, second ferment at room temperature out of the fridge and then put it straight into the fridge. But that comes with just testing it and, you know, burping it and letting the air letting out. The air out. Yeah. Kia ora, where do you put it to ferment? Where do you put it? Oh, okay, yeah. So that's a good question. You want somewhere warm, somewhere warm um, in the house. Windowsill. Wind, oh, out of, sort of out of direct light of the sun, if you can, but somewhere warm. Yeah. So like I don't know, on top of the in the cupboard, in a warm cupboard yeah. above the in fridge the or something. Yeah, in the pantry. Yeah. Somewhere it doesn't get cold. Anything colder than like eighteen degrees, then you notice that the the scoby will go into dormant or it will take a lot a, slow, a longer time to ferment. So yeah, anything that's above 18 degrees, pretty much. Nice. Yeah. When I was young, we used to make homemade ginger beer. Is this a similar process? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a similar process. Similar process, he says. How long till it's ready? About two weeks, just keep testing. Um, 
obviously it's uh, down to your taste buds and uh, yeah. how you like it. Um, but it's probably anything from, yeah, just past. It's sugar 50 grams per liter. Yeah, yeah, anywhere from 50 grams to 70 grams. You pick, you you choose anywhere in that range pretty much. You could do 60 grams. You just, yeah, you can test anywhere from that range. What, what we'll also do is um, we'll, we'll probably put um, instructions for, for Neighbours Day, um, just um, probably for one or two litre batch of brew. Um, and all the measurements for you and put that in a PDF yeah. file and send it to everyone that is registered for this workshop. I've tried making it a few times. It doesn't, it doesn't get fuzzy at all. Not sure if the jars I'm using any tip to make it more bubbly. Got a soda stream? <laughs> <laughs> You're always struggling in the soda stream. Um, yeah, try the soda stream. But I mean, every, everything with, uh, I guess, to you, mate, I think uh, it's all trial and error. You didn't no, get here was, with one hit, nah. and um, it didn't become this good after three I wish, I wish it was that easy, bro. But... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, I guess... Um, what was it? How long till it to really get? Yeah, one to two weeks, but that's just tasting it. And, and, and just going back and yeah. adding stuff. And If you've got those tools, you can use those tools. But just taste. Taste. Taste, taste by the taste. Awesome. Chetty's, um, anyone flying anywhere this uh, coming month, Chetty will be in the, the next Air New Zealand uh, magazine, so look out for him. And if you're on the Bay of Plenty, you might have seen him in the last issue of the newspaper. Um, big things are coming from this end of town. Um, we also- so sharing health, bro, that's all we're doing. It's something that changed my health and we're sharing it. So yeah, it's awesome. everyone, you guys, thank you for listening. If I can help you in any way, I'll help you. Um, yeah, just let me know. And um, around like um, the neighbors' day stuff, I know that will be um, a lot of what he uses as the extracts from the teas goes into gardens around the Bay of Kent yeah. area. And what we do is actually put it out at Papamore Farmers Markets for any of the kids to pick up or anyone that wants to put it in their garden. So um, that's part of uh, the recycling um, and um, I guess cyclical flow or putting back into our environment that is going through the raw kombucha. Amazing. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to see the back. Kiora magazine. Back of this. Uh, Kiora magazine. Yeah, Kiora magazine. No, no, it's called Kiora magazine. Business section. Awesome, in the business section. Um, yeah, thanks um, I think that Sasha might have a question for you guys. Go, Sasha. Um, I actually just uh, really want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, um, I'm already brewing, but um, I've, I've learned so much. Um, and um, I love it, uh, Gids, that um, I'm also, by the way, hello, everyone. I'm also a Neighbours Day connected, just like Gids over there. Thank and, you. And um, I'm in very good company uh, uh, with quite a few uh, connectors in, around the country. And uh, I love it, Gids, that we both chose to do a workshop that is all around gut health. Ah, oh, it's the best, and, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I really want to honor you, um, uh, Ted, for setting up your business and for being so passionate about spreading the word about, you know, uh, natural health and well being. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people underestimate how refined sugars. Um, Yes. have such yes. a, a big effect on how you feel and how your body works and yeah so if anyone wants to join me on thursday we're doing another workshop on sauerkraut making oh yeah so I'll, I'll tune into everyone that. Is, <laughs> yeah, check check the neighbors day uh, facebook page if you want to join oh. us thank you yeah, thank no, you sasha. thank you sasha yeah uh, cool. uh, i'm sorry. gonna come and visit sometime Actually. Yeah, 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 come down, man. Come down to the brewery. Bring a one liter jug. I'll fill you up from the tap. Yeah, cool. absolutely. That would be cool. It's a bit of yeah. a hike from Wellington, but um, I'll be oh. <laughs> <laughs> just when you're around here, Nick. Just when you're around here, Nick. Um, yeah, um, not not a lot of people have got their heads around uh, gut health, but uh, we we both of us met uh, around the same co-papa. Um, wanting to spread um, information and knowledge around uh, 
how much it affects your the quality of your life. Um, and um, as you know, I, I was uh, previously a master chef, and uh, with all my endeavors in food, I, I naturally met uh, Chad through some of the work that I was trying to do in the Bay of Plenty when I came here two years ago. And part of being with Neighbours Day is the continuation of that work. Community. And, yeah. and um, all around community and um, just making sure that our children and the next generation are aware of what's in their food um, and how that affects their minds, um, yeah. most of all. And uh, again, the quality of life. Um, and um, my hat's off to Chad and the work that he's been doing um, people like him need to be honoured, and uh, especially um, within the Māori community, um, what an honour to be around the man who's doing such great work. Hey. Cheers, guys. Has, um, has anyone else got any um, questions for us before we leave you? Awesome. If you have any questions that yeah. you want to ask after the webinar, email and, me. Yeah, chat it. Chad C H double A D at raw kombucha dot co dot nz. Flick me, flick me a, um, a message or whatever, and I'll yeah, I'll get, I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out. Eh?